the, if a woman is not feeling worthy about herself, if you look at her checkbook, it's going to say the same thing, right? Hi. It's, um, you know, I have a thing that's, uh, when we work with our clients at the very beginning, I imagine a, uh, what do you call it? A lady that does crystal balls. Uh, what do you call those people? Uh, you know, palm readers, right? Or a psychic. Okay. A psychic. psychic. A psychic. Yes. So I have psychics, you know, and so it, it, and one of the things that we do, we say, imagine a psychic with a crystal ball saying, show me your checkbook and I'll show you your future. Right. Right. And it is so true with finances, but it, it, it also in relationships. And so, you know, if you, it's when you show me your checkbook, right. Or you show me your calendar, I'm, I'm going to tell you what your future looks like. Yeah. Are you putting in time for yourself? Are you putting in time to in, improve uh, your relationship with yourself? Are you, are you, um, are you being attentive to your physical beauty and your physical natural uh, uh, attractiveness? Are, right. are, you, are you putting time into it, right? Where do you put your time? Uh, are you spending time at the bars? Are you spending time, you know, uh, you know, Netflixing and chill? You know, are you spending time uh, eating ice cream, right? And right. so um, are you paying attention? That's what it comes down to it. And so if you're not paying attention with your finances, you're not going to pay attention in how you're showing up with relationships and dating. Right. Right. And uh, what about the, the those women that are paying a lot of attention to their uh, finances and they built an empire? They have a business, they are the CEO of their business. I have a few, I have met quite a few women in that department. Uh, and so they are doing great business wise. Mm -hmm. They have their own business. They have a lot of money. They own their own property. Actually, some of them own several properties. They have an amazing car. They look great. Mm -hmm. They look amazing. They mm -hmm. have, you know, outside the, the great hair, the great eyelashes, the great fingernails, everything. And they still can't keep a man to save their lives. Right, right. What about in that situation? You bet. And, you know, I, I love that because, you know, I uh, one of the books that I'm writing is called Retire Rich and On Time. And so retiring rich is is relative to what your your definition is, right? So for a woman like that, her idea of retiring rich is having $50,000 or $40,000 a month of trail income. And, you know, and on time. It, it's, so mm -hmm. it's different for everybody. Somebody might say, I want to retire rich and on time. I want $40,000 a month coming in at when I'm 40 years old for the rest of my life. Okay. So that's retire rich and on time. So when we talk about the successful women that are driving forward, yeah. we're either driving towards something or we're running away from something. Okay. I so, that, yeah. yeah. Right. And, and, and all the time we get really successful. Like, so what, I, I've seen this happen when women break out from a relationship they go to the gym, you know, that everything's on point, you know, they're focusing right. on the work. And the next thing you know, they're spending 10, 12, 15 hours a day on external things that they're running towards because they believe that's going to fulfill what's missing. Right. And so when we look at the root core of a woman that is being successful and driving, I love it, right? Because somewhere in their lifetime, somebody gave them a model of how to be successful and how to overcome, um, uh, just how to drive and, you know, right. and how to come away from something, right? So one of the things that people do is they either run away from something or they run towards something. And so we get to ask these women that are driving towards the success, are you running towards something or running away from something? Right. So often what happens when you can sit down and really ask them uh, your key questions, right, in, in the, the relationship dating and techniques that you take them through, when you start to ask them the fundamentals of really where they want to be. And, and who do they want that story to be and look like five years from now? If they're reading their own storybook and somebody's reading it, right? And they say, oh, this is so-and-so and she's sitting on this beach. What is right next to her? The description of that partner, the description of who that is, is important. And so if we're running away from something and that's making us successful because we're running away from something, it might be the wrong thing that we're pursuing. And so if we're running away, if we're running to something, you know, it's sometimes it's finances. People call that greed and greed has a negative connotation sometimes, but mm -hmm. it also can be a good thing. So these women that are becoming successful, it's, it's, you know, we call it greed. You have to run towards something that you want. It's like going after a man. You have to go after something you want, right. but you have to clearly define the picture and the role that you want. And so these successful women, they drive, 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 but there's never a cap of what they truly want. There's never, I want this. And when I get there, gotcha. I am living. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. 
So mm -hmm. it's it's the same. You are just what I am getting for me is that you are taking it to a deeper level. So it's not uh, it's not all. It doesn't always show show up on the outside. It's just the mindset or the beliefs that are operating that it's not enough. So what I am hearing is that in the area of dating and relationships, they are also having that mindset that either nobody is ever good enough, so they can never find the man that they like. That happens a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. or uh, the opposite which is that they are not good enough so when they are with a man they meet a man that they really like they feel insecure and they feel like oh my god it's you know right. what I'm and, like, and like you said when they, when they start when they start feeling insecure like you said they start to sabotage themselves in the right. way they're showing up right and so I right. and so the coaching that we do and the coaching that you do is is helping women not to sabotage themselves and so we hear this over and over, like, and so here's a relationship when it comes to finances and, and dating, right? It's um, having an end goal, like having a cap. So I had a client come in the other day and she's making, as an example for you, she's uh, making $265,000 a year. And she says, but I, I, I'm not happy. I'm not fulfilled. I'm, I don't have the things I want. I don't have, I'm not, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, who, who's talking? Who's talking right now? And I had asked her, she said, what do you mean? I said, who is talking? Because this is not you. This is this is sub, this is that cultural uh, uh, um, environment, subculture inside of you that's telling you what you have to have and what you have to do and what you have to be. And what we get to determine is where do you want to be? Yeah. And she says, "Well, I just want to make good money and have a lot of money coming in." And I said, "But we, I can't help you, Natalia. I can't help you unless we know truly what you want." Right. So having an end goal like okay i want twenty five thousand dollars a month in retirement or i want to retire at age 40. that's specific it's a smart goal it's smart it's measurable it's attainable it's realistic right and then but the other one is when it comes to dating you have to have a list of must-haves that just says this is my list of must-haves because if you just go out and date you're gonna keep dating and keep finding flaws yes. but have your list of must-haves i want a man in this age group but you know i want them to um love uh societal cultural events like i want them to like finer arts I, I want them to be present and attentive you know i, I want a man that um uh, you know that it, some people it's important to religion i want a man that you know believes in going to church two times a week you know um and then we ask ourselves are you willing to be that right are you willing to be that accountability and that, that commitment towards yourself and, and so when we talk to someone with their finances are you ready to be accountable are you ready to commit to that Right. Yeah. Is this is this right? Am I saying anything? Yes. Am I saying, no, no. Am I saying something? It's, no, of course. Yes. It's it's just you need to know. You you have it's it's what we call the North Star. Otherwise, we will never we, we will reach what we want, but we won't be able to see it. So it, it goes along with something that I personally believe through my Length, lengthy experience of doing this and living in different countries and you know speaking different languages and meeting thousands of women is that most women that are not happy in a relationship they have this belief that the women that are happy in relationships are either lucky or that the man is amazing and he's flawless and they just won the lottery and, and got a perfect man. And what is happening in reality is these women that are happy in relationships, actually they put some thought into what they wanted. And when they got it, they decided to choose that and to be happy with it. It's a decision. It's a choice. It's something that they they do run into challenges as well, but they don't see them as as problems. They see them as just bumps on the road, and and you know it's part of relationships. So uh, it's it's a little bit of what you are saying. We need to know where we are going, either in relationships or financially, because with money can happen the same. I mean. We can, you know, we can say, oh, I want money, I want money, I want money. But if mm -hmm. if we don't know how much money, how much money is enough? Right. Where that desire of having money comes from? What do I think that money is going to give me? What do you think that money is going to fix? Or right. 
we don't ask those deeper questions, we are just going to keep perpetuate, perpetuating the pattern and uh, and not and never getting there. Right. So that's so really really important. Thank you. Yeah. No, I love it. You know, when you you talk about it, it's uh, we're talking about relationships. You know, uh, we when you let's just say for example that the, the 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 lady, our friend, she you know when you're the gals you're coaching, they finally get the man that they want. They yes, yes they hold it and they do everything to kill it. They're like ah, you know, their the Facebook, the social media, everything's blowing up, right? And right. then all of a sudden, you know, two weeks later, all those pages on the Facebook and social media were deleted, right? And you're like, what? Right. Where did that beautiful, charming girl go? Right. And, and we go, you know, it, it, it's okay to be in a relationship with somebody and to let it go and to still thrive and, and survive. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's okay because what we forget to remember is that man reflected a beautiful time in your life. When you right. went on a vacation for two weeks, you know, you dated for six years or you dated for six months. It represents a lot of beautiful times that you had and, and and who you became and what you're striving to accomplish right but you know we it, relationships are like waves right i mean we like going to the beach and we like seeing it we don't really know why we like the beach and why we like the waves come crashing in but the waves come crashing in and, and i'm gonna tell you it's a lot like money and it's a lot like relationships you know there's some days where where money starts coming in like waves on the ocean you know on the beach and we're just like oh my gosh look at all this money Woo. Right. it's just crashing in and other times the water is like way, 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 way away from you. And there's nothing but sand, barren desert. You're like, where, right. where, the, water, where, where the water at, right? Where, oh my gosh, what's going on? And so, we, and that happens with relationships. You know, relationships can be there. We feel abundant. It's beautiful. It's all around us. And then there's times where there is nothing around us. We're like, what is going on, right? Relationships, the true relationships are like holding water. Yeah, you it can. can. <laughs> it's yeah. like holding money. If you want to hold on to money, no matter how tight you are, you're going to lose it. It's going to filter through your hands. So what you want to do with money is get into self, get into the preservation that as you have money, you let it flow. You let it do what it needs to do. You let it create and cultivate. You know that it's going to go somewhere, but let it go in toward your heart. Let it go towards your memories. Let it go towards something, a beautiful substance. Not what culture tells us in society, but what you want. Right. And so nobody can get there without a coach. No woman is going to uh, navigate the ways of life and navigate the finances without a financial advisor. No one person is an army, right? And so this right. is why they need your coaching. This is this is how valuable you become and instrumentally helping them get those steps and, and get the direction that they need. Thank you. And the same with you. As, as we talked the other day, I truly believe that there is no other area of our life that will trigger us as deeply and as emotionally as the areas of money and relationships. I believe you and I are coaching the most difficult parts in this wheel of all the areas that makes up, you know, our life, health, uh, you know, housing, whatever, this is it. Why do you think it's so, so triggering because that's the part that I see my clients um, struggling with and that's the part that I was struggling when I started dating and then you know I I did the work and I figured it out but what is your opinion why is so triggering why is so emotionally intense mm, okay good one good one it, it, and again I love how you asked me to be a part of this when we talk about triggering and dating it's 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 very similar to pulling the trigger with finances okay so um, so let me talk because I know you had asked me to share you know the financial side of what triggers people what holds them back from that success yeah. is not understanding your self-limiting beliefs right. we have egos inside of us and, and and you have one of the guest speakers PJ and I love how he talks about the egos and, and what happens but if you heard earlier, when, when a client says to me, I'm making $265,000 a year and I don't know what's happening. I'm like, okay, who just said that, right? We have a voice inside of us that, that talks to us. It tells us what we can get. It tells us what we can't get. Right. It tells us what we're worthy of and what we're not worthy of. And, and, and we know this, Natalia, if they don't go through your, that coaching and that sessions and, and where you can break that out of them and pull it out of them, right? They're gonna continue to follow the same uh, definition of insanity, right? You know, approaching right. relationships and dating uh, the same way they always have, expecting different results. That people show up, okay, you know, they get their paycheck on the first of the month and they say, cool, this is going to be a great month. 
and, and then at the end of the month, they go, man, I didn't make it. I ran out of money, right? It's only the 20th of the month. I still got 10 more days. I don't know how I'm going to pay anything, right? I'm like, you're making 20000 a month. What do you mean you don't know how you're going to pay things, right? I don't get it. But we do get it. It's because they haven't learned to master the limiting beliefs that are controlling their subconscious culture inside of them. Wow. Now, we have a vision board and we have a, a culture board that tells us as, as you know, we're 40 year old or 50 year old, uh, what our vision and what our life should look like and how we're supposed to have this big, handsome, honking man and how we're supposed to be independent financially and, and all these things. Forget all that because, first of all, the number one thing that'll help you is get what you want, get clear with what you want, ladies. Right. It might not be the big guy that looks like Dwayne Johnson, the rock. You know, it, it, it might be a guy that looks like Steve Jobs. You know, who knows? Right. Mm -hmm. it, it, just be clear with what you want and don't be upset if it relates to society's norms. Right. If you're 40 years old. Right. You say, well, I should have I'm 40 years old. I should have a million dollars in my retirement account. It, get rid of that. Right. Uh, right. Well, I'm 55 years old and I should I should already be at retirement. I'm embarrassed because I retired a couple of years and I have no money. Get rid of that. Should have. I love learning this from PJ when he says, don't shoot on yourself. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm 45 years old. I should have a man. I'm 45 years old. I should have a million dollars in my account. I should, I should, I should. He says, don't shoot on yourself. Right. I know I said it kind of fast, right? No, um, no, that's good. That's good. Well, yeah, I think that when we, you know, in my experience, if when we shoot ourselves, we just keep ourselves stuck. We are so into the shame, into shaming ourselves and telling us, that there is something wrong with us, that we should be there, but we are here. And all that is energy wasted into shaming ourselves, judging ourselves, you know, caring about what other people think of us and all that. And actually we could use all that valuable energy into, as you said, getting clear on what we want and going after it without apologies. Nobody, at, at the end of the day, every night when we go to bed, we go to bed with our own head. Nobody, it's, it's just us. So in a way, at the end of the day. So doing what really makes us happy, even though if it's, if it's you know, against the culture, against what your family, um, uh, you know, opinion is, I, I had a client a month ago, she, she's dating this guy and, and he's, he's not what her family thinks that her boyfriend should be. Uh, she was single, she, single when she hired me and then, you know, she, she started dating and then, you know, she decided to go exclusive with this guy. He's adorable. He's adorable. But she had issues with that because her mom didn't like the way he looked. And uh, so we had to talk about that, that, you know, at the end of the day, her mom, if she's a healthy mom, what she really cares is for her to be happy. So that was my, my coaching to her. You go ahead and keep being curious and seeing how you feel when you're with him. And if you are happy, your mom is going to pick on that. And that is going to make her happy. Mm -hmm. Because I think at the end of the day, those are the people that we, that we can actually listen. It's our own selves, our coaches, and you know, people that love us unconditionally. And mm -hmm. we are happy why our mom is going to say, you know, I don't like the way he looks. It's, it's irrelevant at the end of the day. Can, it is. Do you agree? Have you, have you heard of something like that before? Yeah. And, you know, I, you know, experienced it a lot growing up myself. It, you know, it's, I used to think something was wrong with me, right? I'm, I'm oh. half black and half Korean. So being minority, um, I've had those struggles, right? Where, you know, yeah. if I started talking to somebody and, you know, <laughs> They're, yeah, right. And the parent was like, uh, you can't date that uh, that uh, minority man. And it would break and it would just rip my heart, you yeah. know. And so we get to realize that the, the, the best thing that ever happened, some of the advice I got from my mom, right, was um, recognize that people get to stay in their own lane. And they're on their own journey. And so you, Natalia, right, you're on a journey. Right. And, and, and I'm on a journey. Right? And so when this gal that you're coaching is, is she's on her journey and her mother's on a journey. And right. so what I get to help our clients realize is 
your neighbor because he thinks you should do this with finances and you should be this at retirement and your mom you know there's a there's a culture right like an asian culture out there that you know you have to have a certain amount of money and you have to save every penny you can't spend frivolously and you can't do the lavish stuff you can't spend on yourself it's like oh my gosh enough of that you know what, mom dad you are so this is a boundary right mom dad you get to stay in your journey and pursue your life the way you want to do it i'm on mine and right. the sooner ladies the sooner you can recognize that people in your external world are on their own journey and, right. and what they have to say doesn't affect yours. It's right. like, oh, thank you for your opinion, mom. That's awesome. Uh, I wish you well on your journey and, and stay on your path. It doesn't matter what waves come crashing in. It doesn't matter what happens to the economy. It doesn't happen. COVID comes in. It doesn't happen. There's a recession. I am going to stay on my path to what I believe my retirement and my future looks like. Right. So no matter what somebody says to me, it's like, cool, I appreciate that. And I just have to remember they're on their own journey. They don't need, and they don't get to speak to me like that. They did. Okay, they got it out. Okay, fine. Walls up. Thank you. I'll see you later. Have fun. And I just stay focused on my vision, focused on my dream, focused on my list of must-haves in my next relationship. Right. 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 I love how Tony Robbins says the hardest part about relationships, you know, is uh, what would he say? Uh, the selection process. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. if you don't have a clear path at the very beginning, before you set out on your sales, you know, um, before you start dating, um, if you haven't created that, that list of must-haves and you're not really clear on it, you're going to fumble around. Right. Yeah. I think it's a, a lot of that is uh, trust, a trust mm -hmm. issue. We, yeah. we sometimes we don't trust ourselves. Right. So, and so we don't want to like, trust. Yeah. Yes. It's a matter, and, and that's the work, that's the inner work is, okay, how do I start to trust myself so I can trust others? And when we trust ourselves, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to decide, to select one, because that's so funny. I tell my clients, when they come to me, usually they, they're born out, they hate dating, they hate men, they hate <laughs> And right. I, I, I am, I big, I'm big, big, big into transforming them. I, I said I have a superpower. I, I transform them from fear lover to fun lover. So they, they start loving dating and they love men and all that. So they go from a low quality problem to having a high quality problem where they have so many men around them that they like and that the men like them. That is how do I choose? And that's when the trust issue comes into place. It's about how do I choose? I have these two or three guys, they are all great. You know, it's it's an it's another level of um of difficulty. Right. And you know, and we call it, you know, when we're, we're on financial side things, we call it sabotage, right? Okay. You know, same thing. You know, they say, okay, I've got three different investment choices that I could choose from, you know, right. and we show them a financial plan. And we say, if you go this route, you'll be worth $8.5 million in five years. You know, if you go this route, you'll be worth three and a half million. If you go this route, you'll be worth 20. And guess what? They go, okay, it sounds great. I love it. They go home. And guess what? If we have not conquered that self limiting belief, that self cultural talk, a self talk, how they're treating themselves, if we don't conquer that, they're going to go home. And say, yes. who am I to think that I'm going to be worth $8.5 million in five years? Like, that's ridiculous. Like, you know, if, so if they don't trust themselves, they're not going to trust the plan. Right. And so you can have a list of must haves and what you want in a man, but if you don't trust yourself, even if you got it, even if he's laying in your lap, even if he's holding you in his arms, and, <laughs> you know, he's got a cape on his shoulders, right? Even wow. if he has that, you're going to sabotage it. If you're not trusting yourself, you're going to think you're going to blow it. You're not worthy right. of it. Yeah. Right. And that's what we see with coaching the ladies. It's, it's, it's if, you, if they don't get past those self limiting beliefs and the sabotage and their fears, they say, well, I don't trust men. No, it, it, it may be because you're not trusting yourself. Right. And so with finances, when somebody's not trusting themselves with finances, they say, Tony, every year I blow it. I, I keep making mistakes. I keep overspending. I, 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 and all the things that we hear, I tell them, I say, okay, cool. We, what has been your last win? And this is, this is important in relationships, right? So when it comes to the finances, we say, what's your next win? And they go, what do you mean? Or what was your last win? Um, we start to create micro wins, little tiny itty bitty wins. And so if I have a client and, and we see them the next week, I say, okay, how much did you put in your savings account this week? <laughs> right? And when we first start coaching, 92% of them are like, I didn't put anything in my savings. I'm like, oh my gosh, why not? You just got paid last week. 
So then, you know, we, we laugh about that and say, okay, so between now and the next week when we start talking, about how much are you committed to putting in your savings account? What's going to be our micro win? You know, and they go, well, I'm going to put in uh, $250. Okay, cool. That's a micro win. Let's go for it. And that's the first question I ask when we show up at coaching. Did you do the two pin? Did you do the homework? And they go, I did the homework. Yes. Oh, my goodness. You know, we give each other high fives. It's like success, right? And so right. when we start, and, and in relationships, when you start giving yourself micro wins, you can start to overcome the trust issues that you have in yourself which can allow right. you to open back up and trust what the universe wants to give to you. Trust mm -hmm. what the world has to present to you. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. So what, um, let's switch gears a little bit. I know I'm going to switch gears, but. All right, we're switching. We're switching. What? <laughs> switching, switching. <laughs> we're switching. What would be your best, if, if you, I know this is so hard. I'm sorry I'm doing this to you. It's okay. But, but what if you can tell a, whim, a woman that is dating one thing, one advice, something when it comes to dating and relationships and money? Um, the main thing that comes to me at the beginning of our coaching relationship when, you know, when they start dating is, should I pay? It's so basic, I know, but it's, I really want to know what your, your experience on this. Should I pay or should I not pay? And mm. there is a they I, I have my answer, of course, and you know, and most of them don't like it. They okay. usually feel you know, I, I have the tendency to attract very empathetic women and uh, they they like to be nice. That's their thing. Mm -hmm. They feel that if they don't pay they they're I don't know it doesn't feel right to them so what is your expertise what what would you tell to a client of yours that uh, is starting to date and she asked you this question Tony should I pay on my dates or should I let him pay Excellent. Excellent. Good question. That one comes up all the time. You know, it's a, uh, you know, there's never a hard and fast rule, uh, but I do know a principle. Okay. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, we want to tell, the, if I can tell the ladies that are watching this is, is uh, whatever your heart feels and whatever your decision is, it's okay. Right. Whatever you decided to do and whatever you did, whether you paid or whether you didn't pay, it's okay. You were following your heart and your current subculture you're following that. There's nothing wrong with what you've done. There's nothing wrong with what you will do tonight no. or this next day, right? No. But going forward is this. Here's my principle. My principle is this. Never take away somebody's opportunity to receive a blessing, okay? Mm -hmm. Never take away someone's opportunity to receive a blessing. What that means to me is this. If a, in this scenario in dating, if a man wants to go through the effort of courting you and calling you and, and scheduling the date, getting his car washed and getting it gassed up and putting money in his pocket, he might go get a mani pedi, get his hair done, you know, and you know, he's going to fly. He even wants to buy some new shoes, right? Some new underwear. Look, ladies, guys do this, okay? We do this. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so we go through all his effort, you know, we get the, you know, we get the restaurant, we get it all picked out, we're having a good time. And then the check comes, right? And this is like, okay. Now as a man, I'm thinking, my mama would be proud of me. I've done everything right. I opened the door, <laughs> I picked her up, you know, here comes the check. Now, guess what? I'm like, ooh. And then when the girl says, oh, I'm going to pay for mine. Thank you. I'm like, no, 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 no. I got it. Please, please. It's on me. I, I, this is, I'm so looking forward to this. No, no. I, I'm going to take care of mine. Thank you. The guy's like, ah. <laughs> you know, we just I get, know, we get, right? We, we I get love crushed. the way you put it. It's all this. I love it. I love the way you put it. I, I feel it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So we, we just say never take away another person's opportunity to receive a blessing. So when he pays, and you can still be nice, just allow it, you know, at the end of the date, if you didn't like it, you say, hey, this has been, a, you know, I had a great evening, and you're a great man. And uh, I'd like the option to be able to call you if that should come up for us. Right? But don't take away his blessing, because he gets to go home and say, thank you, fair enough. And he goes home and goes, I had a good day. Uh -huh. <laughs> I rocked it. Yeah. And he's happy. Right. But if you if you take that from him, he doesn't have the opportunity to feel the full effect of it. And he didn't do anything wrong on the date. It just wasn't a match. It doesn't mean we have to take something away from him. So it takes nothing of a candle to light another candle. So let him be lit. Let him go forward and, and be that loving man. Because ladies, from a man's perspective, if you burn him, 
he's going to go to the next relationship and hopefully hopefully not meet one of your ex or one of your girlfriends right but he's going to go to the next relationship to burn and he's going to the next one and burn and be burned and burn or what we want to do for that universe is just we want to pay it forward with love we want the, uh -huh. the forgiveness we we want the blessing to go forward and uh -huh. when we start giving people that blessing and let them go forward in life we'll release our our, our, our own and we can go forward in life right oh how beautiful loved it loved it Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. sharing your expertise. Thank you for saying yes. I appreciate it so much. I know you're so busy, and mm -hmm. uh, but I really, really wanted to to have you here. I think you. everything you just said it has so much value and it's going to help so many women mm -hmm. to have the love they want. There is anything else you would like to say before we? Um... Of course, of course, Natalia. I have a lot, but you know, I, I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell, right? Uh, you know. Um, so, you know, one of the last uh, advice is uh, I want to share when you ask me about the finances is is, is dating when it, uh, is uh, set a budget mm. for dating. Right. So it, it is, and, and we, we, you know, we, I, I I started to uh, you know talk about it the other day when we were talking. It's just that when I do financial plans for clients, they and I ask them, hey, well, what's your mortgage, right? What's your rent payment? What's your car payment? What's this? What's that? What's that? Oh, what's your dating budget? They go, huh? Dating budget? What do you mean? I go, what, what's your dating budget? They go, I don't know. I don't have a big dating budget. I go, right. yeah, you need a dating budget. And they go, so it's one of the reasons why women and men don't date more often and try more dates. So mm -hmm. uh, try more dates, create a budget. I can tell you this. Uh, somebody said, what's the average cost per date? And, I, and I've told men, it's $300 for men and $200 for women. Wow, that sounds like a lot. No? It does, right? It does. And so we break that down with people because they don't want to believe that up front. And <clears throat> so this is one of the reasons why people won't date as much. Right. Because they don't have the, the mindset or the budget for it, right? So a man's not going to date five or six women in a month, right? You know, because he's... it's. If it's three hundred dollars to him, so I, I'll break it down from a man's perspective. And you guys, as and ladies, you'll listen to it and you'll hear the similarities. Okay, now for a man, we're getting ready for a date. We're gonna get a haircut. Okay, so we're looking at forty bucks. You know, we might go to Super Sport Flips and get one for twenty, but then we gotta tip the person. But no, no, right. a guy's got forty bucks invested already. Now he's gonna go wash his car, right? Cause he he gotta be clean. You know, so now he drops another twenty to thirty dollars on his car wash. Okay, now he might go get a fresh fly new shirt, you know that type of thing, and and he puts that on. You know, and he goes to the store, but you know, you know, like he remembers what his mom told him, you better have fresh underwear just in case. You never know. So now he gets some new underwear, right? And he gets some new socks because the shoes might come off. You know, and now he got a nice, now he got a nice, right? So now he's got a nice pair of socks. You know, and and so now he gets ready for the date. But guess what? Just in case, just so, lady, just so you know, the way a man thinks. We have a couple hundred dollars cash just in case the debit card doesn't work for some reason, right? Oh it's like, you know, we're, we have these thoughts in our head, like, man, I hope that debit card works, you know? And so it, it, we have cash. So we're going to put a couple hundred bucks cash in our pocket, right? And we're going to gas up the tank, you know, for the car. So we got 40 to $60, depending on what they drive, you know, if it's a man with a big truck, you know, he's got a hundred dollars, you know, to fill up his gas tank, right? Um, if he's got a small BMW, but he, so if you've been tracking with me and you've been following the, the, the budget for a man already, He's already out 300 bucks. Right. So every week, is he going to go out and date a new woman, a new person? No, unless it's in his budget. Now, mm -hmm. ladies, ladies, Natalia, uh, right? When you get ready for a date, you probably get a little, some new jewelry, a little new bling, right? Now, you know, you're going to get your hair did. You know, you, you're going to go, you know, you get your color. And color is <laughs> how much? Two, 300 bucks? I mean, depending on where you live, it's 500 bucks, right? Yeah. Yeah. Lady, get your, see, and you know, you're going to get your nails done. Now, you know, you get, you know, I don't know if you get the glue odds or if you can go see your girl, right? But, you know, how much is nails, Natalia, right? Average cost yeah. of nails? 30, 40 bucks minimum, minimum. I don't know. I don't get my nails done. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, so you got the nails. Now you got, you know, the, oh. The the eyelashes. Nice. That I oh, can oh tell you. Oh, my gosh. The eyelashes. I love eyelashes. And those oh. things are like 100 bucks just for a little touch up. Just to get them done, it's like almost 200. See, so with your with your nails, with your lashes, with your highlight color. I like hair right? extensions. I don't, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. oh you know, right, right. And so you can see, and then and guess what? Just in case the date goes bad, you're going to have $100, $200 cash in your pocket just in case you didn't pay, right? Right. Like, right. You see my point? So you're already out a couple hundred bucks just preparing for this date. Right. Now, well, if you I, mentioned if, the clothing and the perfume and all the... 
And that's just to go to dinner. Now, what if the man asks you to go out of town to South Lake Tahoe for the weekend, or he wants to take you to Vegas right. for the weekend? Now you got to get a whole new bikini. You know, then you got to get yeah. some new props. You know, it's a, yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, so it's, that, that, you yeah, know, we important. we do need a budget for sure. <laughs> and that, thank you, thank you for sharing that and giving me the opportunity to share that. I, I think yeah. you know when you asked me to be on the show uh, financially, I think there are a lot of corollaries uh, where people get to do. You know, the, what happens in relationship dating happens with the way they plan their finances. Um, but yeah, making sure that they budget money for a date. Um, right. Yeah. And I'm thinking now. I don't know. I'm just thinking after what you said that that is also a good way to pre-qualify a guy because if he if he looks clean, he's, he has a nice haircut and his car is clean and he pays for the date. And sometimes, you know, I went on 200 first dates in two years. And being honest with you, I was taking all that for granted. I was such a spoiled brat. I was like, oh, next, next, next. You know, <laughs> I, I, was, I was. Yeah. And, um, but now that I, I, see that all the effort and all the money that gets into it that's a very good way to kind of i mean not take it as a rule but that's a good checkpoint to say okay if he's taking good care of his car his hairstyle and mm. all that he's taking good care of other things in life it kind of circling back to the beginning when you were sharing this this very very powerful belief about that as we do one thing we do everything right uh, it's right. a I love that. I, you know, I, I have fun with that one. You know, it's a, a tip for the ladies. If you're on a date, how does he pay for the meal? How does he pay for things? Okay. So if you want a man who's independent, you know, who doesn't accumulate that, because how many times have you been in a relationship where like man's paid for everything? It sounds great. He's taking you parachuting, you know, all these things, Vegas trips, flying all over the place. And then you find out later he's got $50,000 in credit card debts. Right. So here's the, so here's the tip, ladies. How is the man paying for the meal? You don't have to look at the check, but you just have to, if you get a chance and you look at the, debit, at the card, is he using a debit card or is he using a credit card? Mm. Is he using cash? You know, that's important to look at because if he keeps pulling out a credit card to purchase everything, right? it, it, it might be a little indicator. You know, some people have businesses where they do a, a write-off. Yeah, you know, some, they, some people get the points, whatever they pay exactly. off. Exactly. But you know, I, 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 I like using the debit card. It's a date. I'm not trying to get a business write off for it. You know, I'm not trying to, you know, cheat on the tax code. I just, it's a date. It's, it's a personal expense. And so then yeah, just keep note of that. If, if, and then if he uses a red credit card, you know, at dinner, and then you go out for drinks later and he uses a black credit card, it, that's an indicator. If he can't use the same card, you know, he's probably real close to his maxes. Now, I know guys are going to punish me for this if they see no, this. No, right. that's awesome. Thank you for sharing <laughs> that. Thank but you yeah, pay attention, to what, pay attention to what they're doing. And uh, right. if they're changing cards at the same night, that's an indicator that, uh, that one card doesn't work enough. So. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your value, for your time, for your energy. It has been a pleasure, a pleasure, a pleasure to interview you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, do you have the free gift for the viewers? Or... Sure. You know, I, I, I gave that some thought. You know, Natalia, I, I, just so you know, uh, when, when, my, when clients come to us for financial coaching, um, it's generally a, a three month financial coaching course. Um, but any client that comes to us uh, as a result of your summit, right. we're going to gift them 50% off the entire three month coaching program. Oh, okay. wow. Thank 50%. you. 50%. Yeah. That's and awesome. so, we, you know, we have our standard uh, rate. And, 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 you know, when we talk to the clients, we'll tell them what it is and we'll tell them what, what 50% off is. It's just that it's it's not like you do the summit every month and we you know we're, we're gonna be constantly out of money right mm -hmm. but we really want this opportunity because I've told I've told my clients this I never not want somebody to get the coaching they need because of money I never want someone to not get the coaching they need wow. because of the cost let's mm -hmm. let's let's get rid of the cost let's get that out of our head let's get the coaching that we need let's get the self esteem and let's get, break those barriers break those walls down. Um, and be really the light that we want to live and, and, and be that shining guy. Just follow the guidance, follow the coaching, get what you need so you can get where you need to go. And that's, that's, that's our goal. So uh, anybody that's on this, uh, listening to this, or watching this, uh, I, we will make sure that we give you 50% off because you referred to us through Natalia's summit. 
That's awesome. I am going to place the link uh, on, below this video. So, and I'm going to share it on an email as well. So thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Natalia, for letting me be part of your show, part of your program. And uh, love you guys. Peace, love, and happiness. <laughs>